This video is about how to come to Canada as international student. This is Leila. Kindly click the subscription button below. As an overview, I am going to discuss different pathways to come to Canada. Student pathway, major steps, GCK, frequently asked questions. There are different pathways to come here to Canada. One is you can come here as a visitor. We can uh, immigrate, secure a work permit, or secure a study permit. The study permit is not a visa, and it does not by itself allow you to travel to or enter Canada. You may also need a visitor visa or an electronic travel authorization, an ETA. You can choose from applying through regular stream or SDS to student direct stream. The student direct stream, the following are the requirements. One is proof of valid language test. You're familiar with it as in a form of IELTS. Uh, second is proof of guaranteed investment certificate or the GIC, which uh, amount to $10,000. I have a very detailed explanation or video for GIC, proof of full payment of tuition for the applicant's first year of study, letter of acceptance coming or issued by the school, most recent secondary or post-secondary educational transcript, proof of completion of upfront medical examination. I have also a video on this in more details. Process uh, processing time here for the SDS is they said it's faster within 20 calendar days and the fee is 150 electronic application only. For the regular stream, these are the basic requirements. Proof of acceptance or the letter of acceptance, again, it should by the school. Proof of identity, uh, this is passport and also two valid or two more recent pictures. Proof of financial support, or sometimes it's being called proof of funds. Letter of explanation. This is also called the SOP or the statement of purpose where you are, why you are coming here in Canada as a student. And the processing time for this one, I just check it in IRCC website, is within 110 calendar days. So it depends on the country. It depends also on what kind of visa or permit you are securing from uh, the immigration. Uh, on my part, I had uh, I've chose to do the regular stream. And uh, from the time of my lodgement of my application until the time I was approved, it only uh, it was only 22 days. And then the fee are the same, 150 for both student direct stream and also for the regular stream. And regular stream uh, have also two method in lodging. So one is you can do the electronic or you can digitally process it, your application. And second is you can do a manual application if you are more comfortable with doing manual submission of your documents. Now we can start looking for your preferred school. Consider the following. Accessibility. Is it easier to ride the bus or public commute vehicle going to your school and or workplace? Affordability. Is the tuition fee affordable? Use the Google map in finding the location. Web search is to look for the school. Each school has their official website, so you can check the details of the program you prefer. And then you can also check the provincial website. Each province is here in Canada, they have their official websites with all the services they provide within their territories. So you can check all of them. Every information are handy nowadays, so, um, but uh, patience is a must in checking for those informations. Let's take Lambton College as an example. I attended or graduated from this college. So you have to search on the official uh, website of the school, 
go to the international stuff because we're applying as an international student. As you can see, uh, different colleges have different also locations. For this college, it has Sarnia. It, uh, it's called Campus uh, for the location, Mississauga, and then Toronto. So I enrolled here in Toronto. If we're going to scroll down, we can see a lot of information uh, about the college. And then if you want to check on the program, here in Canada, we call it program. I think back home, we call it courses. So if you want to study a program, you have to click this one. And then let's find, let's look for my program. It's financial planning and wealth management. And then a program is divided into semester or term, or we call it in here as intake. As you can see, January intake is already closed. Maybe uh, it's full pack now. And for the January or for the May 2023 is already closed also. So the next one that you can enroll in is the September 2023, which is open. Okay, so try to scroll down. You can see the program information how the program is being delivered. Will it be um, in a form of a hybrid? Uh, it's a mixture of online classes or you really need to go in person. So you can see it from the academic delivery approach. Okay, some videos and then admission requirement. What are the basic requirements for the school? And if you need an English test and these are the terms. If you, we want to check the term, uh, the term is divided into courses. Okay, uh, back home we call it subjects, but here they call it courses. Okay, that's the program map and different kinds of contact information when you want to add something. And the most important thing, well, we want uh, information uh, that we would like to know is how much it will cost us. So for this term, uh, when I first enrolled here, my term one was 8,610. Now it's 9,200. And the total for this four terms, which is two year program, 25,700. You have to uh, see the details of the courses that you are planning to enroll. Because example for this one, if you already have a financial calculator, uh, then you just have to bring it with you when you come here. You don't need to buy. Okay, so there are things, supplies, uh, books, that you're, you probably have it with you. So you don't need to uh, shell out any money or extra money for them. Okay, so these are the basic things that you can check on when you want to look for a school. It might be a college or a university. You must be certain that the school that you would like to enroll in is a designated learning institution. This is the link where you can find a list of designated learning institution by province or territory. So uh, there is a drop down there if you want to visit the list by territory or province, just have to click it. So if I want to check Lambton because it's in the province of Ontario, I just have to click Ontario and then on the search box, um, just write down the college or the university that you want to check and you can see if it is registered or not under DLI. So Lambton is a DLI Institute and uh, the important data in there is you have to uh, know the DLI number. Now you had already chosen the school that you would like to enroll in. You have to secure the letter of acceptance from that school. And these are the basic requirements, passport, form 137, high school diploma, college TOR or the transcript college diploma, resume. And then on the right side, you can see that uh, sample letter of acceptance from Lambton College. And also uh, we would like you to know that we can help you secure LOA for free. Other requirements for a student permit, for personal birth certificate, if you are married, you have to secure a marriage certificate, employment certificate if you are already working, bank certificate and or bank uh, statement. 
business documents if you have uh, established business in your home country you can also use that as a proof proof of investment if you have bonds stocks or any other form of investment english test that is the ielts and i think for uh, quebec if you had taken the french test or the tef i think that's how they call it and then financial support and for the statutory you can secure nbi um, and then um, if there's a need for you also to secure a police clearance some uh, they are requiring for the police clearance and then for the medical it is better to do the upfront medical or if you are not going to do the upfront medical you have to wait for the ircc medical request To start your application, let's create GCK account. Let's create GCK account. I'm going to link this page or this URL below. Sign into your IRCC Secure account. Your account lets you start an application. Submit and pay for your application. Get messages related to your application. Check the status of your application and update your information. So since we do not have yet an, a JCK account, let's register. And here and the next page is you're going to see the step-by-step -step on how to register with JCK account. And then click register with JCK. Since we do not have yet an account, so we cannot sign in. Let's go over here, sign up, accept the terms and condition, create an account. So, uh, you can see this username checklist as your guide. Let's continue if it will let us go through. Okay. And create the password. Just try again. Continue. And create your recovery questions, answers, and hints. So select a recovery question. First pet's name. Okay. Let's um, let's say first birth pet's name is pet. My memorable person is let's say boyfriend. My memorable person. My memorable person hint is male. Memorable date, let's say it's January 1, uh, 2001. Oh, it's wrong. <laughs> it's supposed to be from year 2001, January 1. Memorable date, oh, first date. See if we can able to memorize all of them. Let's click continue. So let's put on the email address. Set the confirmation code to this address. Now I have the verification code. Key it in the confirmation code and then click continue. So email recovery completed and please select continue so we can get inside our GCK account. Let's log in. Click sign in with GCK account. Okay, let's minimize, I accept. So create an account. Enter the following information that it appears on your passport. So let's see what I have in my passport is, that's my given name, my email address, preferred language is English, Continue. So again, 
There will be security questions along the way. So security question. just example you can create your own security questions and let's continue so from here you can see that you were able to create already a JCK account and when you are going to apply for your study permit you can see down below here apply to come to Canada okay so you, you can explore whatever the information that you can see from here. Just read it through. Thank you. Most aspiring students would like to know how much it will cost them to come here in Canada to study here. So I only list down here the basic funds needed. Uh, to be more exact, you can check on IRCC website if there were changes already in the uh, amount requirement. So first is the processing fees. As a student, the processing fee is 150 Canadian dollar. I only converted it into my home country's currency, which is Philippine peso. And the conversion rate that I chose uh, is 40. And then I wrote it down here, although I did not uh, include it as part of the total. Uh, if you have spouse with you that will also come here um, and will secure work permit, it will cost uh, 150 Canadian dollar. For the open work permit holder fee, it is 170. And if you have minor uh, uh, dependents or kids with you that would like also to study, it will cost them 150. So you just have to add them in the amount if you have this in your application. And for the biometrics, for an individual or for one person, it's $85. And in peso, that is $3,400. And if you are going to apply as a family, it will cost you $170. And $255 if you are a group of performing artistry or four more persons. And then for the upfront medical, in IAM, it will cost you 10000 in peso. And let's convert it, it in Canadian dollar. That is 250 For police clearance, when I had it or when I uh, process it, it's only 155 pesos. That is 3.88 Canadian dollar. I don't know how much it costs now. It has been two years or past two years ago. Um, and for the tuition fee, I only um, write down here my tuition fee. So there will be other, I mean, it depends on the school that you are going to. It may be higher or lower or lesser than this, okay? So for the first year tuition fee, which is an, uh, we had discussed before that the requirement of IRCC is you have to pay for the one year tuition fee. But uh, take also into consideration if the school uh, permits you to only pay, uh, sometimes it will only require you to pay the deposit. And then other school will only require you to pay the first term. In my case, I only paid um, for the first term. And then for the others, because I had done it in installment basis. And then for the second year tuition fee, which is still unpaid during that time, so uh, that's $9,500 and uh, in peso that is $380,000. So the living expenses per year required by the IRCC is $400,000 in peso, which is $10,000. As you had remember when we had discussed about the GIC or the Guaranteed Investment Certificate, which is the requirement in SDS, the Student Direct Stream, uh, that's 10,000 also for the student. Remember, if your program is uh, one year, 
then you have to provide one year um, living expense, and that is 10,000. If your program is for um, two years, you have also to prove that you are a legit student who have funds or you, whom you can, I mean, you have funds that, that can support you, that is if you are going to stay here in the country for two years as a student, then you have to also prove that you have two years living expenses, funds for that, okay? So in total, to sum it up, the total estimated cost is 36,388.88, that is Canadian dollar, and the equivalent in peso is 1.455 million. Family members of the principal applicants were eligible in applying uh, for concurrent processing if they apply at the same time as the primary applicant. For more information, see the definition of a family member in subsection R13, temporary residence applications, work permit, study permit, and temporary resident visa applications of the accompanying family members must be submitted online as part of the family grouping. Officers may also request additional documents from the applicant at any time in order to make a decision on their application. Officers must be satisfied that the applicant is a bona fide or true and will leave Canada by the end of the period authorized for their stay. Incomplete application, you must also know that incomplete applications are refused. Frequently asked questions. How to start? Read IRCC's official website. Join the FB community group for international students. There are a lot of them. Uh, you just have to search in uh, Facebook of what are this community and ask questions to people who were previously and some current students. Next is how to find a school. Search from the school website. As we have discussed in this video, all of them are very informative. How much is the cost? It depends on the program of what school it is and the province or the location of your choice. Can a high school graduate apply as an international student? Yes, they can. There are schools that accept high school graduates. Question, I have limited funds. Is it possible to continue my goal and apply as an international student? Answer. There are schools that provide scholarships and grants. You just have to search on them. There are schools that have affordable tuition fees. Question, is IELTS or other English proficiency exams required? There are schools and program that doesn't require IELTS or English proficiency exams. So you just have to look at the school if uh, about the requirements. Another question, can I uh, travel back home? during my study period or semestral break. Yes, a study permit is not a visa and does not by itself allow you to travel to or enter Canada. Therefore, you have to secure a visitor's visa or an electronic travel authorization or ETA. Next question is what is the minimum number of hours I can work? Before it was 20 hours, but now uh, you can work more than uh, 20 hours per week. So that's all for uh, our frequently asked questions. There are, I think, a lot of uh, questions in your mind. Uh, you can uh, put your comments or questions below on this video so we can try to answer them. I hope you find the content of this video useful. Kindly subscribe, like, share, comment. Thanks be to God. Have a nice one.